So, welcome to a new video. Today we want to look at spark tuning. I have teased this uh, once on the community tab and it seemed like a lot of you wanted to see this. And uh, yeah, it did take some preparation time because I had to build some dead cans, which were basically or are basically some hearing protection headphones. And uh, well, basically you have to connect a tube to both of the cans and then to your engine bay. There are actually a lot of videos that show how to build them, but actually a few of them get it kind of wrong because while yes, the build is uh, pretty much the same always, but you have to look at a few things that have that you have to get right. Otherwise they won't work correctly. First of all, you have to get the length of your tubing right you do not want longer tubing than is actually necessary on my car i run it through the firewall and then into the cabin and it is as short as possible so that you get the most accurate and the loudest possible sound from your engine then also something you want to keep in mind is that for example if your knock sensor is on the intake side of your of your engine uh, intake sounds if you have an ITB setup for example can be really loud and then you might not hear knock properly so you may have to connect it on the other side on an engine mount or whatever engine mount bolt for example but please make sure to put the mount or to mount the basically the metal part of the dead cans to the block of the engine as close as possible to where the actual detonation happens so do not put it on the valve cover, that doesn't work. I've tried it, you can't hear anything except for a bit of valve train noise, nothing else. And you cannot hear knock. I have tried it, it doesn't work. And also on the head is kind of meh. And on the intake manifold, it also doesn't work. So please do me a favor and connect it. Best case scenario where the original knock sensors would be located. So most of the time at the upper part of the block and if that's not possible at least on the lower part of the block where the block can kind of resonate the noise further so that you can hear it better. So that's the one thing. The other thing is how it works. While I cannot really show you while I am showing you the noise because I'm going to put this microphone into the dead cans and I'm going to sync over that audio so I'm going to talk over that later but I will show you some stuff while driving. I will or start with a map that is really conservative and add timing over time so that you will be able to hear the knock increasing and increasing in what areas. And determ determining where the knock is, you will pull back timing there or rather if you go up one or two degrees at a time, then just in that area where it knocks you go back one or two degrees as i will show you when i'm driving actually okay so that's it so much for the explanation it's really not that difficult in my opinion this works better than a digital knock sensor because the digital knock sensor can pick up different noises as well such as valve train noise which is kind of regular so that might not be as noticeable but there might be some other issues such as rocks flying off flying off the road or whatever uh, that actually might be an issue for a electronic knock sensor and you can pretty much distinguish that with dead cans you obviously can use a digital knock sensor as well but i wouldn't rely on it and i would always use some dead cans to at least check your tune at the end when you have used your knock sensor to, to determine what ignition, ignition angle to use. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye.
this is my ignition timing that I achieved at the final, well, final pull, I guess. And this is without any knock and very, very minimal pinging when the engine is very hot. So when I have driven on the highway and uh, when I then give it full throttle all the way through the rev range. When the engine is colder, so the IATs are colder, colder it obviously will ping even less and uh, so that is important to do. If you have done the same, I would suggest that you pull about two degrees of timing from that. In my case, my ignition numbers look very low because my um, base timing might be off by a few degrees. Normally, on a normally aspirated engine, you should be looking at around 30 or 28 to maybe 32 to 34 degrees of ignition timing, depending on your engine setup, your compression, and uh, your combustion chamber setup or whatever. It always depends on the engine. In my case, it's a 4AGE 20 valve uh, silver top. So I have a 10.5 to one compression ratio. So relatively high for a standard engine, but still uh, if the base timing would be completely correct, then we would be looking at about 28 to 30 degrees. So because even the stock ECU runs more than that. Well, obviously in a Speedowino we don't have the possibility to integrate a knock sensor itself, so you have to rely on uh, dead cans to tune the ignition angle. Um, it is pretty safe like this if you do it with the method I showed you, so with the dead cans on the block you can hear pretty much everything. You just need to look at the placement of your dead cans so that you actually hear what the engine is doing. I have used this method before on turbo cars as well, on the engine mount for example, where it also works very well on the MX-5 for example. There I have also tuned the engine that way. So as you have seen what I have written while filming, the engine will be able to handle some pinging as every engine does with a stock ECU because a stock ECU over advances the timing and then pulls back timing uh, regarding the knock sensor. So knock sensor listens for knock and if it hears any knock, then the engine pulls timing out to get rid of that knock by some amount. And that's why I say, well, some amount of knock or some amount of pinging is okay while when it goes into the heavy knocks that you could hear when I ran 29 degrees then that would be a case where the engine could actually take damage. While that is true for a naturally aspirated engine or a lightly boosted engine if you for example run a engine at a high boost level with standard pistons, you have to be a lot more careful with regards to knock as I was here because even a little knock event, maybe some pinging is going to be fine as with all engines, but a little bigger knock event, such as you heard in the 29 degrees sequence could be a piston ringland failure or something else. So be really, really careful when tuning your spark tables. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about spark tuning, let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, otherwise I wish you a good day and goodbye.